Cambridge IGCC, February March 2020, Paper 22. Solutions for Question 6 to 10. Question 6. A measuring cylinder contains 40 cm cube of water. A solid metal ball is dropped into the water and the water level is rises to 56 cm cube. The mass of the ball is 80 gram. What is the density of the metal from which the ball is made? So here basically you need to find the density of the metal ball. Here you can use the equation density density is equal to mass over volume where mass is already given that is 80 gram and volume of the metal ball we have to find so here when you read the question it says a measuring cylinder contains 40 centimeter cube of water so initially we have a measuring cylinder which contains a water of volume 40 centimeter cube then after that a solid metal ball is dropped into the water so the water level rises hence when the metal ball is dropped the new water level is 56 centimeter cube so that from these values you can find what is the volume of this metal metal ball and that will be the difference of these two reading that is 56 minus 40 so you will get 16 centimeter cube that is the volume of this metal ball now we have both mass and volume of the metal cube so we can just directly substitute so you will get density is is equal to 80 over the volume which we have calculated and the correct answer will be 5 so option d is correct answer for question 6 Question 7. A car travels along a horizontal road at constant speed. Three horizontal forces act on the car. The diagram shows two of these forces. What is the size and the direction of the third horizontal force acting on the car? In this question, you need to find what is the third force acting on the car and how much is the force acting. That is the magnitude of this unknown force also you need to calculate and you need to identify the direction so let's check what will be the other force acting on this car and it is very easy as you know there will be frictional force acting on the tires and the frictional force will be always opposite direction of the motion same like a resistance so the third force acting on the car is friction now you need to find the magnitude and the direction of friction as it is opposite to the motion it will be backward now about the magnitude or the value how much will be the frictional force to know that you can use the important point given in the question that the car is traveling with a constant speed that is very important as the car is traveling with a constant speed, according to Newton's first law, the net force acting on the object will be zero. Because Newton's first law says that an object will remain at its state of rest or will move with a continuous constant speed unless there is a resultant force acting on it. So, for an object, if it's continued to move in a constant speed means there is no net force acting or there is no resultant force acting. So, here in the question also, the car travels with a constant speed. That means the net force acting on the car should be zero. As the net force acting on the car is zero means the total forward force should be equal to the total backward force and forward force there is only one force that is a force from the engine as you can see from the figure and that is 1500 newton and that should be is equal to the total backward forces and there are two backward forces one is air resistance and the second one is friction so you have to add both the forces to find the total backward forces so the force due to air resistance that is 300 newton 
plus force due to friction which one we have no idea so now we have an equation where frictional force is the only unknown so we can find frictional force by just rearranging this equation so you will get frictional force is 1500 minus air resistant that is 300 so the answer is 1200 newton and the direction is backwards so the correct answer is option a question 8 a car is driven round a bend in the road at constant speed what is the direction of the resultant force on the car when it is going round the bend? Now here you can see the car is moving in a circular path. As you can see from the question. So here you need to consider a circular motion. So let's see what are the properties of a circular motion. This is very important. So, for any object which is moving in a circular path will experience a force or will have a net force acting on that object and the direction of this net force should be towards the center of its circular path. So, for an object which is moving in a circular path should have a net force acting on it and the direction of this net force should be towards the center of the circular path. These are the two conditions. So please note down. These are the two conditions for circular motion. That there will be a net force acting on the object. And the direction of this net force will be always towards the center of the circular motion. If you know these two conditions you will be able to answer the questions related to circular motion. Now let's check the option. Option A. What is, the question is what is the direction of the resultant force on the car when it is going round the bend? So option A says the direction of the net force or the resultant force is parallel to the motion. And we know it is not parallel, but this net force will be always acting towards the center, as we discussed in the second point. So option A is wrong. In option B is also saying the net force direction is parallel to the motion and that is also wrong. And in option C it says that perpendicular to the motion and towards inside the bench. Yes that is correct as you can see the path is like this and the force net force is perpendicular. It makes a 90 degree so it will be always perpendicular to the motion and it will act towards the inside of the bend as we discussed this net force will be towards the center so the correct answer is option c you can add one more additional point about circular motion that is the f net or the resultant force will be perpendicular to the motion of the object as you can see the object at this point is moving in this direction it's tangent but the net resultant force is acting towards the center so this net resultant force make a 90 degree or we can say in other words like the net resultant force will be always perpendicular to the motion of the object so please note these three points about circular motion question 9 an athlete with mass 70 kg trains by performing precepts with a load on his back the diagram shows the perpendicular distances involved. The center of mass of the athlete is EM and the center of mass of the load is carrying is CL. The mass of the load is 6 kg. What is the upward force exerted by his two arms? So let's see what are the forces acting on his body. There is his center of mass or the total mass which is acting downwards. And the load on its back that is represented by CL is also acting downwards because its weight will act downwards. Then the upward forces will be the force exerted by his two arms will be upward like the force exerted by his two legs that will be also upward. 
here his center of mass is given so you can find what will be the downward weight that you can use weight is equal to mg as the weight is given 70 and g is 10 the downward force or its weight acting at the center of mass of his body will be 700 newton likewise you can find what is the weight of the load which is also acting downwards let's represent it by wl weight of the load again you can use mass of the load times g as it's given 6 kg you will get 6 times 10 so that the 60 newton is the weight of the load both are acting downwards now we can consider his foot as the pivot so i will just draw the free body diagram of the forces acting on this man so when you consider his foot as the pivot we can see there are three forces acting one is the weight of the man and which is 0.9 meter away from the pivot if we consider the pivot as its foot and the other one is the weight of the load which is 60 newton and which is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3 so you will get so you will get 1.2 meter away from the pivot and the third force is upward force which is a force exerted by his arm and which is from the pivot 1.3 meter away because you have to add the total distance that is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 as this distance plus 0.3 distance plus 0.1 so you will get the total 1.3 meter away so from the pivot when you consider both the weight causes an anti-clockwise moment but the force exerted by the arms causes a clockwise moment like this so basically there are three forces the weight of the man and the weight of the load both causes a anti-clockwise moment and the force exerted on his two arms or by his two arms causes a clockwise moment since this man is in equilibrium you can write the total you can write the total clockwise moment will be equal to the total anti-clockwise moment. And the moment equation is force into the perpendicular distance from pivot. So we can find what is the total clockwise moment. As you know the unknown force exerted by the arm causes total clockwise moment. So the force times and the distance for this unknown upward force is we have already seen 1.3 which must be equal to total anti-clockwise moment that is the moment by both the weight so first of all is body weight that is 700 newton which is acting a 0 0.9 this meter away plus you have to consider the moment by the load so where again the force times distance where the force is a weight of the load which we have calculated 60 times the distance is 1.2 meter so when you substitute f times 1.3 is equal to 630 plus 66 that is equal to 696 so in order to find the value of f you can make f as the only subject so you will get 696 over 1.3 so the correct answer is 535 newton so when you write in it in 2 sf you will get 100 540 newton hence the correct answer is option c question 10 an air pistol fires a pellet forward what is the motion of the air pistol so initially we have a air pistol with a pellet inside both are not moving stationary but when you fire the pistol after firing the piston the pellet will move forward as a impact of the pellet since it is moving forward the piston will move backward 
Now we need to check what will happen to the speed of the piston. It will be greater than the pellet, pellet or less than. In order to find that you need to know the principle of conservation of momentum. That is the total momentum before firing, the P before firing should be equal to the total momentum P after firing. And as you know, before firing, both the pistol and the pellet, both are not moving. The total momentum before firing will be zero. Both are at stationary. So both are having no velocity. Since there is no velocity, the momentum will be zero. So the total momentum before firing is zero. That should be is equal to the total momentum after firing. That means the momentum of the piston after firing plus the momentum of the pellet after fi firing should be zero. The sum of these both momentum should be zero. And pellet is moving forward so it will have a positive momentum and the gun is moving backward so it will have a negative momentum. And momentum of this individual pistol and pellet you can find using the equation that is the mass of pistons times the velocity of piston plus the mass of the pellet plus the velocity of the pellet and here you know the velocity of the piston is opposite direction of the direction of pellet so you can put a negative sign and this value is c zero so now you can take one of the moment to the left side so you will get mpvp it was negative to the other side but when you take to the right left side it will become positive so mpvp is equal to m of pellet times velocity of the pellet now let's check compare the mass of the piston and the mass of the pellet as you know the mass of piston will be definitely greater comparing to the mass of pellet pellet it will be less and we have to equate this equation so what will be the velocity in order to get an equal value so in order to get balance the equation vp must be less and v of the pellet must be greater then only both will be equal here the main reason is the mass of the piston is greater. So basically we can conclude two things. The direction of the piston will be backward and the velocity of the piston will be lesser than the velocity of the sorry velocity of the piston will be lesser than the velocity of the pellet. Hence the correct answer is option B. The air piston moves backward with a speed less than the pellet. Option B is correct. Please subscribe my channel for more past paper solutions. Thank you for watching my video.